was thinking uh, earlier about mental game and actually I was reading an article about mental game and some people tend to misunderstand mental game. In fact, I've talked to people that they're saying, well, you know, you look behind the target, you get an idea of where you're going to go, you get alignment, you get placement, but then uh, as soon as you set up to the ball, what then happens next? You know, what do you feel inside or what actually happens? And so I'd like to give you a tip about what I do in the mental game that set, kind of sets apart why I was succeeding when I was playing great golf and then what happened before I actually gained this mental tip why I was failing. And uh, let's go back to why I was failing just a moment is that oftentimes what happens is we we set up behind the ball and we think that we're preparing for this great shot we think okay I have my target I'm looking ahead and then I have the bunkers I see the water I see all these problems ahead of me and either a being a visual learner which is you know visual auditory kinesthetic which we're very uh, apt to want to learn about but visual learners are always looking out in the in the distance to try to find out exactly what's going on oh look at the bunkers here but they lose their awareness in the moment now kinesthetic players are all of a sudden they're just so focused on this uh, maybe the grass or maybe the grain or maybe the lie and so they're they're more present in this place than they are in the further place which is the target so they tend to lose aspect of the target and then auditory players have a, you know a little bit of mix of both but sometimes they're listening to the birds or they're hearing another card off into the distance so what we want to do is combine you want to find out first are you visual auditory and kinesthetic and then I'm going to take a little bit of my tips here and add it in so what we don't want to do again is just to kinda of just be all over the place and not have a uniform routine and that's the key about this tip is routine about what's happening in the future so um, what I'd like to do is kind of introduce what you should do and as you step back here, I'd like you to pretend that there's a space back here that's your rightful space. You own it. You've paid for this particular time. It's a green fee. So that green fee gave you a right. You know, on an average, most people that shoot uh, between a, over 100, 50% of players shoot over 100, 50% of players shoot under 100. And these 50% that shoot over 100 feel like they're constantly in a rush because someone behind them is hitting into them. They see someone at the tee. They see someone else in the fairway and they're so worried about everybody else's game, they're not present in their own game. And the, the idea behind this is you create this space. This space is your own space. You bought it. And, and what I like to do is, is get you to this mentality that when you step into the space, after you've chosen your club due, due to your distance, and you're in this space, find a calming, sort of a peace about your your awareness that where you start blocking other things out and as you calm down be sure and breathe that's very important to keep breathing and then also to uh, get into a moment where uh, you're looking at what I call the PTA the placement which is ahead of you that's where the ball in the alignment of the target that you're headed to and it may not necessarily be the exact target line it may be that you have a dog leg right and you have to aim left of the hole and then the other thing I like to do is from P, go to the target. So looking at the target, and it might be a dog leg left or dog leg right, like we said, or an uphill or downhill. Look at the target, find out about the terrain ahead of me. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and use a, a pitching wedge. And as I'm looking into the green, this is a pretend situation, as you can see, but as I'm looking into the green, I'm looking at the shape of the green to find out what's happening. And then finally, I looked, like to look at the air, which a lot of us miss. Now the air tells us a lot of information. First the trees may blow, the wind may blow and tell us something about the direction of the wind. However, what I like to think of is what is the height of this pitching wedge. And if I'm on the range, I get an idea on the range knowing, hey pitching wedge, how high are you going? How high are you rising up into the air that's causing the wind to be influenced? So not only are you looking at the wind, but you're asking yourself, am I going to match the height? of what I look in this pitching wedge up to where I'm looking in the air. So again, PTA. It's almost like, uh, you know, being a, as a kid, my mother went to PTA with me in school. So that may be another little acronym for you to remember, PTA. So again, we're creating space. I'm back here. Now, in this moment, here I am. I'm building up this confidence level. I'm thinking about this confidence level. Eight out of ten times, can I accomplish this particular shot that I'm looking for? Is it something that I've uh, done on the range before and that I can accomplish? And if it is, 
then I know of the right club in my hand and the right choice ahead of me. After that moment, eight out of 10 times, building up a belly confidence, not just a mind confidence, but a belly confidence. And then when I finally feel that PTA, I have it secured, I know what I'm doing. Yes, eight out of 10 times. Yes, I am going into the shot. Now you saw me kind of give this little powerful punch right here. And that powerful punch tells me, yes, now I'm a, more of a kinesthetic player. So in this kinesthetic action, I needed that kind of uh, that grunt, that motion, that movement to tell me, yes, this is what I want. Boom, hit it. Now, here's something that most of you don't realize, is that in a golf shot, you need to know whether or not you're holding the club in the right hand, the left hand. You know, no, need to know how many steps it takes for you to get to the ball. And after my punch, I know by timing how many seconds it takes me. A step, a step, a step, and then I start switching my grip right here. You can start to see I switch my grip, went from the right hand to the left hand. And I already know this is a routine I've built in. I start to build my grip right there and including another step, another step. And as I get the club down, I start into my waddles now. So my placement of my feet are getting comfortable. That's something I'm needing to do. The waddle of the club is coming in. I'm getting a feel for the club. And it's a waddle. And so finally, I finish all my waddles, my five steps, my waddles. And I begin to look at the placement, which again is ahead of me. Just, just ahead of me, I take the ball alignment to possibly a spot that's ahead of me. I look at the target, I look at the air, I've confirmed the information that I secured back here. And once I've confirmed that information, let's go back to the waddle, so we're back in motion. So waddle, waddle, waddle. And then the club gets placed for me, I kind of slide it up. A placement, a target, an air, a deep breath. And then my eyes come right back to the ball. I'm back in this present moment. I'm focused here. And at the bottom of that breath, from the pit of my belly, after I've given all the tension, let go of the knots. And then finally, I fire. And the, the club comes back, obviously hit the shot. And I make that nice big finish, looking at the ball, hopefully to go where I've asked it to go. That's what routine is about. And then without something that tells you every step of the way, how many seconds you're working for, this ownership that you have because you've purchased that green fee. You know, average routines on tour are 30 seconds. So you just need to do the math. If you paid a $200 green fee and you're spending 30 seconds times say uh, 90 shots, it's, you're paying a lot of money just for this space and time. And you rightfully deserve it. No one else can get in your space. If someone, if I'm in my space and someone says, Shannon, Shannon, what? I'm, I'm done. I've already, I've kind of closed out of this moment where nobody can get into my space. This is very important. And you need to have, you need to feel like you own this. You need to feel like it's yours. You don't let anybody take it from you. And you get in here and you create a routine that's consistent each and every time.